Sure. Sign it out. Okay, so we're going to look at applications of Riemann sums. Okay. Which we've actually done, uh, we did applications of area under the curve, right? And a Riemann sum is approximating the area of the curve. So it's actually a similar application. Um, it's going to give us an accumulation of an amount. Okay. So it's very, again, remember the, the definite integral, the area of the curve gives us the amount of change. We're approximating that definite integral, so we're the approximating an amount of change. Okay. Same process. Similar process. Um, now keep in mind, in real life, uh, very rarely are there actually functions that represent a real life situation. In other words, if I'm, um, we'll use this first example. If, if I am the captain of a luxury yacht, I don't have software that's measuring uh, the actual rate at which fuel is being consumed. It's not possible. Well, it may be possible, but it'd be really weird to do. So instead, what I do is I have some one of my one of my crew members measure uh, the the how do I put it the fuel consumption rate at different times. Okay, and so I measure that consumption rate at different times, and I can figure out how much fuel will be used over the entire interval. Okay. In other words, I can kind of guess um, approximately how much fuel will have been used over an interval. So notice we're at, we have a luxury yacht consuming fuel at a variable rate given by this chart. Now at time zero, we're using exactly 15 gallons per minute. Okay, that's what my whatever is calculating, okay, measuring. At 30 minutes, we're using 20 gallons per minute. At 60 minutes, we're using 22. At 90 minutes, 32. 120, 36. And at 150, 41. So what's happening to our fuel consumption rate over time? The fuel consumption rate, R of T, is increasing over this time interval, right? So at this instant, we're using 41 gallons per minute. Okay? At this instant, at, yeah, per minute. Okay, so, so think about this for a second. Have we used 41 gallons of fuel at this instant? So up to here, we're using different amounts. So from 0 to 30, we're either using 15 gallons per minute or 20 gallons per minute, more than likely something in between the two, right, on average. And so we want to figure out, okay, how much did we use in that 30 minutes? Okay, that's kind of the idea. So the question is how much we're going to use a left Riemann sum first to estimate the amount of fuel used over the entire interval. <laughs> So a left Riemann sum. So recall, a left Riemann sum, we're going to start with our leftmost function value. right? Now, how wide is each of our rectangles going to be? So since our units are in minutes and these units are in minutes, we, could just, we don't have to do any conversions here. If they were in different units, we want to do some kind of conversion probably at some point. But how wide is this rectangle? Well, it's 30 minutes. How wide is this rectangle? So every rectangle is 30 minutes. So since it's a, a constant change, then we're going to use a left Riemann sum. I'll call it L of, and we're going to have one, two, three, four, five intervals. L of five equals, each one is 30 wide. And since the left, we'll start with the leftmost. So we'll have 15 plus 20 plus 22 plus 32 plus 36. We've got one, two, three, four, five rectangles. And this is where the calculator comes from, Andy. Hmm? And so we can add all these up and then multiply it by 30, and we get 3,750. And now think about the units here for a second. This is a 30-minute interval, right? And these are gallons per minute. So if we multiply minutes times gallons per minute, we end up with gallons. Okay. In other words, we're getting an amount of fuel that we use. Okay. In this case. Now, is this greater than or less than the actual definite integral? Okay. How do you know it's less than? Okay. So I'm going to say less than. Because a left Riemann sum. Hey, somebody's feeling that one. Is deficient. 
I'll use that big word, deficient, for an increasing function. Deficient? Deficient. In other words, our R of T is increasing. We're using more fuel per minute as time goes on, for whatever reason. I'm not going to worry about it. So since our R of T is increasing, the left Riemann sum is lower than. Okay. And you can, you know, think about this visually. I, actually, if I'm asked this question off the top of my head and I haven't thought about it in a while, I will almost always do something like this and then draw a left Riemann, oops, a left Riemann sum. Right? And so it's underneath. And I say, oh, that's less than. I just, I will almost always do something like that where I draw an increasing function and then just do the left. Because it'll work no matter whether it has a positive or a negative. We saw that on the assignment on Friday, where the function was under the x-axis and it was still, still following the same rule. Okay. The chart shown to the right shows a few points on a function that gives the acceleration of an object as a function of time over the interval from 0 to 5. It says, use a right Riemann sum to provide an estimate of the final velocity of this object after five second, seconds, if at time t equals zero, its velocity was 16 meters per second. Okay. So we are going to estimate the final velocity. Now notice, we're given acceleration. We're given the rate of change of velocity. Okay. So if we, I'm going to say our final velocity, final velocity will equal the initial velocity, which uh, in physics you probably see V sub F, right? Okay, so will be the initial velocity plus the change in velocity. So that's the integral, in this case, from 0 to 5 of the acceleration function. So the initial velocity equal uh, the final velocity was the initial velocity plus the change in velocity, which is the the integral of acceleration. Okay. Now we can do we know the initial velocity as 16 meters per second. So our final velocity will be 16 plus the integral from 0 to 5 of a of t dt. Now because we have this table of data, we can't actually get the definite integral. All we can do is do an approximation. We're asked to use a Write Riemann sum for that approximation. <clears throat> so, over here to the side, I'm going to say the integral, I wanted to change colors, the integral from 0 to 5 of A of T dt is approximately, okay, we're going to approximate this using the right Riemann sum. Uh, let's see here. So how wide is each rectangle going to be? One. Oh yeah. So each we've got seconds here, right? We have one, one interval, two intervals, oops, three intervals, four intervals, five intervals. Notice five minus zero is five. Divide by the number of intervals. We'll have five intervals. So each one is one, right? So we have one times. Now, for a right Riemann sum, we skip the first one, go all the way to the last one. So we have 5 plus 9 plus 10 plus 8 plus 7. <clears throat> 14, 24, 32, uh, yeah, 32 plus 7 is 39. <clears throat> and notice again, our units here, this was our seconds <clears throat> times meters per second squared. So we end up with meters to, per second to the first half. And this is the accumulated velocity amount of velocity change, right? Just how much the velocity change is. This, this is equal. Because this is equal to 39. Oh, <clears throat> so our final velocity will be 16 plus 39. Actually, it's not equal to. It's approximately 16 plus 39, or 55 meters per second. No. 
it's just something you want to get in the habit of trying to do. It's tough. <coughs> Because that's a good question. Why am I jumping? Because this is kind of this is kind of side work, right? This I'm, this is my general train of thought here. I've got my general idea: the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the integral, right? So then I plug in my initial velocity plus the integral. So then I do my work over here, actually getting so approximating the integral, so right? To find because this is my this is my process to find my final answer I'm looking for. In order to find that, I need the definite integral. So the question was, why is the work all scattered? Right? And it's really not. I, I do have a train of thought here. I don't necessarily break it up this way. So I'm not just jumping randomly. I'm setting up my problem. I'm realizing I don't know this. So I do this work off to the side to approximate that integral, which because that's the purpose of the lesson, that seems like that's the most of the work. Right? But in reality, I'm trying to figure out the answer to the question, which is what's the final velocity. OK? Very good. Well, I got that. OK. So that's it. That's it, guys. Um, stop recording. So again, I'm going to give you the answers to some of them. All of them. Okay. Because some of them you have to write out the answers, and there's no. Olivia, yes, you're Okay. So number one is the numeric answer, and you should get 23. Now make sure you include uh, units on these when appropriate. Just get the habit of writing units. That's always implied on AP question. Units must be included. Sometimes, if you look at an answer key from a College Board, it'll say 1.4 units specifically. But every question, if you don't put units and they're appropriate, you'll lose a point. So, uh, and that's out of nine, so you don't want to lose those points. Okay, so number one is 23. Number two is 17.6. Number three is not a numeric answer. Number four is not numeric. Uh, number five is not really numeric. Number six is 261. Number seven is not numeric. Number eight is 282. Uh, number nine is not numeric. Number 10 is 155.5. That's it. The rest are not numeric yet, but uh, explain yourself. <laughs> Thank you.